Father, my name is Alan Lamont. I'm bringing a message about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moving through us. So that the words that we speak and the things that we do are not us, but the Holy Spirit. Listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter 14. Verse 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not known me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Why do you say, Show us the Father? Believe as you have not that I am in the Father, and the Father of me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. Then the Lord goes on to explain that he would send the comfort of the Holy Spirit. In the same way that the Father worked in Jesus, and that Jesus did not speak his own words, even so the Holy Spirit, the comforter in us, is the one that gives us the wisdom to know what to speak, to know what to teach, to know what to preach. And of course, what we have to preach is the word of the Lord, the word of God. That's what we have to preach. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit will give us words that will edify people, that will build them up. And that's what we need to do in our life. Allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Give up. Stop struggling with God. Just yield and yield everything to Him. And the Holy Spirit will then rise on the inside of your spirit. And His presence will overflow. Jesus said, of the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. That's the Holy Spirit's presence. We don't need to go to some revival to catch the fire. All you have to do is draw a circle around you where you stand and don't get out of that circle until you are revived. Until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's good to be really determined in prayer. Like Jacob wrestled all night with God in prayer. He knew that he had to have the blessing of God. He had to make his peace with God. You know, there's something about a desperation in prayer. When you're really desperately hungry for God. And you really want more of God in your life. And you come before God and you press in. And you press in. There's something about that that really touches the heart of God. And God gives you what you ask for. That's right. God is raising up prophets. He's raising up prophetesses. He's, he's raising up apostles evangelists and pastors and teachers online on the internet to preach his word that's what he's doing I consider myself an evangelist with a prophetic edge a prophetic gifting but my gifting is to preach the gospel that's why for a lot of the time I didn't want to go into the anti-Vatican movement but it was the will of God it was the plan of God God had a purpose for that work that I'd done and the videos are still out there on YouTube from other people that have downloaded them and re-uploaded them so the work is out there but what I want to talk about right now is the Holy Spirit of God the Holy Spirit we have to honour the Holy Spirit honour his presence we can't just come to God just to experience his presence that's what a lot of these revivals are about supposedly where people say you know there's like holy fire and everyone's falling over and everyone's shaking and everyone's holy rolling everyone's laughing, everyone's falling over that's all they want and they play worship and worship and worship until people are in that state of mind and then once these manifestations occur they call it the move of God I'll tell you what a move of God is preaching the Bible that's a move of God Amen. preaching the word of God that's a revival where you see sinners under the fear of God uh, under fear and trembling they know that they are sinners they know that they are going to hell they know they need to come to Jesus that's a revival not this other counterfeit revival where people talk about you know gold dust and gold fillings and angel feathers and all of this nonsense I've watched a lot of the videos so I know the score, I know what it's all about I remember in 1994 meeting John Arnott in uh, the Usher Hall in Edinburgh and that's all it was he preached for about 20 minutes then they moved all the chairs out of the way and everyone just began to shake and laugh and roll around I walked out of there I walked right out the unfortunate thing is it came into my church at the time and the pastor unfortunately embraced it all and so there was no longer really any preaching of the word it was all about the anointing it was all about the power of God and it was all about people really experiencing manifestations and signs and wonders and of course the Lord does miracles today we don't have a gospel with no power but the gospel of Christ 
That's the power of God, the salvation of everyone that believes. As you preach the gospel of Christ, then the signs and wonders will follow. But we don't follow off the signs and wonders, they follow us. Praise the Lord. If, and only if, we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. If a man is not preaching the gospel, and he has signs and wonders, then that man has been used by the devil. That's the truth. But, can you imagine how the Holy Spirit feels? When all the people want is his presence, just so they can enjoy the power of his presence. It must grieve them. The Holy Spirit wants intimacy with people. If people would only close the door and shut themselves in and have time with the Holy Spirit, you'd be amazed at what the Holy Spirit could do through your life. Once you have that personal intimacy with him, it will no longer be your words, but it will be the words of God speaking through you. I just do believe that there's not enough reverence for the Holy Spirit in a lot of church services. I know there's a lot of false revivals today because they're trying to use the Holy Spirit you know, and they're trying to sing themselves into a frenzy, an altered state of consciousness, where the, the Holy Spirit will come. And a lot of it's manipulation. A lot of it's the power of suggestion. You know, laying hands on people, saying, "Lord, give them more fire, give them more fire," and they're pushed over or they fall down. And it happens all over the place, and people think it's a move of God. Look at Benny Hinn. Look how he does it. He throws his jacket over people. He goes like this. He breathes in the microphone, and hundreds of people go like that and they fall over. That has got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Nothing. It's complete nonsense. It is. Nonsense. It's not God. God can heal the sick. God can raise the dead. God can open blind eyes today. God can do that. But what he wants most of all to do is he wants you to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit whereby the Holy Spirit changes your heart. This is where I'm really going to go into the message now about purity of heart. People want power but they don't want purity. People want glory but they don't want brokenness. People want the fullness of God but they're not willing to be empty. You see. Salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift. But if you want more of God, He wants more of you. God says in the Bible, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from the wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And I will hear the land. You can be so filled with the Holy Spirit. That you'll be so. Just, just aware. You'll be aware of it. But there is false manifestations. There is false revivals. There's also things called drunken glory. Where people get drunk on the glory of God. That is so ridiculous. And it immediately puts people off the gospel. I'm not saying we can't be slain in the spirit, but that has been used as an evidence of the power of God way, way too much. And I do believe that the Holy Spirit is grieved by the way that the church treats him. They talk about his anointing all the time, yet it's almost as if it, the Holy Spirit is separate from the anointing. He doesn't, he's not. Anything that God does, supernatural, is a manifestation of his spirit. Jesus said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. All I'm saying is this. I'm just trying to bring a revelation of the mindset of a lot of churches. They want the Holy Spirit to come. Come Holy Spirit. Well, where is he gone? Why isn't he already there? Do you understand what I'm saying? Come Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, then once the manifest presence starts walking, then that's it. That's all they care about is the manifestation. Is the signs and wonders. Is the experience of God. What about the passion of the Holy Spirit? He is God. He is God. The Holy Ghost. And I've found in my life, when you have reverence for the Holy Spirit, and respect and honour for the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders will break out. I pray for people. I've seen healings. I just don't make a big deal about it. It's just natural. It's natural for the Holy Spirit to bring healing. I pray for the sick and I've seen them healed. And I say that with all honesty before God. But that's only by His grace. Only by His grace. I was only a vessel. One man had scars on his neck all the way down. And I prayed for this man. He had shingles. I prayed for him. He came to church the next day. And he had new skin on his neck. He was in tears. The church was in tears. I was very moved by that. First time that God had ever healed the sick through me. But it wasn't planned, it wasn't organised. We were actually in a house having a Bible study group. 
and I noticed he couldn't eat properly. And he, I said, can I have one with you in private? Are you okay? And he began to share how he couldn't eat or sleep really. And the shingles had caused scars to appear on his neck. It's hard to explain, but anyway, I prayed for other people and I've seen them healed. I prayed for one woman once in a, a home. It was at a Christian church in a home in uh, Leicester. And this woman was blind in one eye. And I prayed for her and she got a sight back in the eye. That happened. I saw it. I was there. Other people can testify of it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. But the Holy Spirit will come to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit will rest upon you when you're preaching the gospel. He's not going to just come and give you experiences of his glory so you can just enjoy those experiences for the sake of enjoying them. No, you need to have reverence for the Holy Spirit. I believe what is coming in the church is the fear of the Lord. There needs to be more reverence for the Holy Spirit than what there is. There's a lot of chaos in the charismatic world. It's not God. It's not God. What you need to do is return to biblical Christianity. Go back to what it was in the book of Corinthians. Yes, speaking of unknown tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, healing, the power of God, the working of miracles. We can all work those miracles, the sin of spirits, words of wisdom. We can all move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But, it's not for us to have experiences. It's for people to get saved. For people to repent of their sin. For people to get born again. For people to get delivered. For people to get healed through us by the power of God. That's why the Holy Spirit gives us His anointing. Not so we can roll around and you know laugh and holy roll. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. That is a counterfeit revival. A real revival, you will feel the power of God, but it will always bring holiness. It will always bring conviction of sin. A true revival will do that. God bless you. And thank you for watching the video. God bless.